All right, what is going on, guys? It's Scott, Kyle, and Manuel here. Oh, just lost Kyle for a second there. There he is. Yeah, moving uh, spots. Yeah, so we're going to do a little live look in on the UFC Vegas 54 weigh ins. Uh, in between the fighters weighing in, we've got some storylines that we want to go over. Uh, but first, how you guys doing today? Doing I'm good? great, brother. It's good to be with you guys. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me pull this up. And then, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yes, sir. Michael Johnson weighing in right now. There he is. Uh, let's get a little volume here. <laughs> looks like he made weight easy. There we go. He made weight. So he, he looks pretty fucking solid there. He does look good. He does look good. Michael Johnson is is a guy, uh, Manuel, that that I bet almost every fight, and I've lost a ton of money on betting him. <laughs> oh no! All right, that, Maximov's that's... coming up here. I don't want that juju because I like Johnson <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> I do too. Maximov, he looks pretty good. Look at that tattoo. He's hanging out the Diaz brothers. He's getting plenty of tattoos now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't oh. know if he looks comms out ready, but he, he looks ready. Mm, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not sold on Maximoff yet. I'm not. We'll either. talk about that in our breakdown. But I'm just. I think he's a good fighter, but I'm not quite. Especially the money line here. No way. This is uh, Manuel, right? Manuel Torres. Yep. yep. Yes, Manuel Torres. He looks fucking shredded. It's a good yeah, fight. That's a good fight. I'm uh I'm betting violence in that one. Taking the under. Was it under two and a half? I, I took the under one and a half at plus money. Wow. Okay. You it's like plus, it that much. It's plus one twenty. Yeah, they're they're both gonna come out scrapping, I think. <laughs> Veer and rocking the, the uh yeah. like seventy shades. <laughs> that's our Doesn't... girl. We we had her on the show. Oh she that's awesome. How how was she? How what was her personality like? She's like She's the, a lot coolest, of fun. the coolest. The yeah. coolest. Doesn't speak a lick of English. <laughs> That's true. We did. Have, I, I remember now we had, we had to hire a Portuguese translator for that. Yeah. And she That's was cool. hanging out in. Uh, Brazil. Yeah. In Brazil. Fucking somewhere. Uh, in her car. Somewhere, in her, well, yeah. In her car. But it's some in some like no name fucking town. Just Davey crushing Grant. Beers. Davey Grant doesn't have a shred of fat in his body. <laughs> no. <laughs> look at I, I'm pretty sure I can see his heart beating. Look at how low his chest is. It's yeah. it's an awkward thing, right? It's yeah. like some some women have a low low rack. <laughs> right. He's got like a, a low just yeah. whatever. He's got a, a long he's upper though. chest. Yeah, he is. He looks yeah, he looks shred. good. Oh, she looks good too. Wow. She shredded too. My goodness. Araju. Oh yeah. See, like if she can fight for three full rounds, the way that she looks, then we're game. Just yeah. Cardio, man. Andrea Lee has looked like a different fighter recently, too, though. Scary. She's like Marlon Vera, right? Like two yeah. different careers. Yeah. Yep. Well, after she got the shit kicked out of her uh, against Roxy, I oh, think she, she finally started uh, trying hard. And she had some, um, some guy issues. I think she was married to. Well, listen, she guy issues. The guy was like he beat her up. Yeah, exactly. And, That's uh, what I mean. Yeah, like it was like the whole domestic violence <laughs> issue. He ended up running. It was a fugitive. Yeah. Got. Yeah, that that that's definitely some guy issue. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, that's exactly what I mean. And now that that distraction is gone, it, it's it's helped her out a bit. Wow, Patrick Patrick looks terrible on the scale. He looks he, like he's an old man. Yeah, he is an old man. <laughs> <laughs> He does look terrible. He looks like a fucking, like the early stages of a zombie movie when he's like just turned. Or like he's trying out for a part in like a biblical movie. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, he, or he looks, he looks kind of like fucking Christian Bale at the end of The Machinist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the blonde just, dye was not a good choice, but it just, it just looks gray. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. man. You know, I'm also probably trying to convince myself that Michael Johnson's going to win that fight. That's what this is about. Yeah, I like uh, I like I Johnson significantly more now. 
I think he's going to get that that dub. Angela Hill's another one, like amazing uh, shape, tremendous build, like yeah, like a five hundred record. I know thirteen yeah. eleven. It's insane. <sighs> we'll talk about that fight. I mean, it can go either way. It could. Yeah, I'm I'm scared of that one. And Verna's our girl, so. Oh well, there you go. Exactly. So you have some bias toward. I like yeah. Verna in my breakdown, but there's a big but. KGB up, just KGB just came up to the scale. My bad. It's okay. I ended up not pulling the trigger on that fight, uh, betting wise. Yeah, she's in great shape too. Mm-hmm. Everyone's looked good in the scale so far in terms they of like, their physique. Yeah. Keep those hands down. Uh, so speaking of, uh, yeah. I can remember last week. Yeah, did you see they just came out and said that scale was accurate? Really? Yep. So Ooh, no that? belt. That yeah. was just that was so weird. The whole thing was really weird. Dude. So, so the scale that wasn't accurate was in the fighter hotel. Yeah, it was in the back, <laughs> the back room <laughs> scale. Yeah. So the the real scale was was right. Right. But I feel like you. If you have that much fucking money on the line, you got to make sure every scale within a five mile radius yeah. is. And then, if the scale was not right, then shouldn't they all get a little bit of a mulligan? Like a, well, he did get the extra hour. I mean, that's true. Yeah, and then he went back to the scale that told him he, it was spot on, <laughs> and then he's like, "All right, well, I guess I'll just, I guess I'll just <laughs> chill with my feet up for forty five minutes, and then go back out there." Yeah, yeah. Brian Span, big as always. Ian Kudalaba, though, guy's a monster. Yeah, he's an animal, isn't he? Yeah, out of out of control on the roids, probably. <laughs> I have no Moldovan. credible no credible information to suggest that. Just saying, the Moldovan juice. Yeah, yeah. man, he doesn't. You know, it's, I keep forgetting he's from Moldova. I worked I've, with. I've, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I worked with a guy from Moldova. Guy was guy was insane. He was, well, okay, <laughs> so you know, like they're Russian speaking. They're pretty much like Russian culture type you know mm-hmm. so yeah they're kind of like russian russian dudes can pretty, pretty pretty wild i remember uh we were like dude what are you eating he's like it's good it's good it was it was sour cream he just had a whole tub just of sour a bucket cream. of sour cream and he goes oh it's like yogurt <laughs> yeah it's it's a fact they use sour cream like americans use ketchup yeah and i guess that's the way i put it like they it's in everything he was just eating shouldn't it. even have it yeah. He also um we're fire <laughs> firefighters and paramedics. We went on a medical call and uh the patient was really fat and he, he oh, went boy. he went right up to the patient and was like, You know, you probably wouldn't be so sick if you weren't fat. Oh <laughs> we were like, dude, <laughs> in America you could not talk like that to you. Yeah. I'd be a little Every, more PC, everyone dude. is way too fat here. <laughs> Well, that you know, like you having traveled, especially when I was younger, I noticed it when I was like my teenage years. When you go abroad, like yeah, we definitely tend to be heavier here. In the right? States. Yeah. Like other countries, it's like you you have to like really work hard to find someone who's obese. We uh we definitely lead the world in that category. Oh yeah. Hate to say, it. I could lose some pounds myself. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm not helping here. the cause myself here. <laughs> but, uh, uh, my, my wife is Russian, and so whenever we're talking about like uh, you know, Eastern European Russian culture, married for about seventeen years, I, I've been up and close and personal. And yes, sour cream <laughs> is like a cornerstone <laughs> right. of their meal. Just eat it out of the fucking can. <laughs> yeah, like yogurt. I don't know. They love sour cream. I mean, uh, to be fair. Like plain plain Greek yogurt and sour cream are not <laughs> too far off, but I don't think I would go get a fucking yeah. bucket of Daisy for <laughs> no <laughs> for a snack. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's just different, just different, you know. Well, we, like I uh, like gravy with my mashed potatoes. Like that's that's clutch. They don't even do gravy with the mashed potatoes. I don't understand that. Really, I need to have gravy. Yeah, and so like they'll serve mashed potatoes with no gravy. It's with dry. something else, obviously. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. I'm like, you know, I'm like, you should have some gravy. It's not hard to make. <laughs> powder, whatever it takes. But yeah, yeah, for them, we get sour cream is like a side 
when they're having soup. Like that to me is one of the oddest things, like a, a cold spoonful of sour cream right into your soup. I could, like, so I could see on a chili or on yeah. a, um, like a yep. tortilla soup. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But okay. yeah, regular, like a chicken noodle. Exactly. <laughs> Italian, like Italian noodle soup. wedding soup with fucking <laughs> sour cream, please. <laughs> I'm like, no, come on. Oh man. That's funny. Limits. There's limits. <laughs> While we're waiting, you guys want to go over uh, some betting cards? Yeah. Let's, let's do it, dude. Let's do All right. It. Um, so I'll go over. So one of the straight bets that I like, I like Alan Nassiamendo this week. Ooh, talk to me. Uh, he's plus 180. That's what I got him at. That's what I locked him in at. I'm not sure what he's at right now. Um, but I locked him in for two units. I, I like Alan Nassiamendo a lot. Um, and everybody's argument against Nasimeno seems to be that Tagir sucks. I'm, I'm not so sure Tagir sucks. Um, and when I was watching that Tagir fight, I remember thinking that Alan Nasimeno is a guy that I will bet going forward. He's just violent at all times. He doesn't yeah. let you relax. If you if you take him down, you cannot relax for a second. Um, and Hadley is, is a little unproven. Um, and he's a British wrestler which I don't always know if it's the same as being a wrestler from Russia or somewhere like that. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Yeah. You know, I, I like Hadley at first glance, um, but I have my doubts. The money line is not great for him. It's like two to one favorite right now. Yeah. You know, Hadley. Yeah. Sitting minus two twenty. Yeah. And you know, the eight and zero record looks nice. So a lot of casuals are going to just put money on him. And parlay it right that's mm -hmm. probably where some of the money lines coming from yeah but man his game is rough right like doesn't he have a lot of holes in his game yeah, oh yeah <laughs> and and nasty man is a guy that'll make you pay he's violent yeah yeah he's very violent trains with chucky olives yeah so he's training with a good group of guys right so he's yeah. got a good camp and they both another thing charles Oliveira and nasty Meno basically had camps at the same time not only the training partners, but they had camps. Right. Which I like. That's a great point. Yeah. That's a great point. Um, I mean, if there's a dog you want to look at for this card, Nascimento seems like somebody to and a, consider. Another dog that I noticed, I think, I think, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think all of us, me, you, Scott, and uh, Eric, are all on Petrosky. Yeah, and you know we're gonna, we'll break that fight down whenever you want to talk about that fight. But I have real like specific thoughts in that fight. And... I, want, I want to hear it. Let's hear it now. Yeah. Okay. So because uh, go ahead, Scott. Just one thing, real quick. The Nick Maximov money line is down from minus four ten to minus uh, three fifty. So we yep. might be onto something here. The, the line movement is in Petrovsky's favor. So th the biggest question. If you like Petrovsky, it's going to be the cardio aspect. Oh, yeah. That, that's, the only, that's the only thing. Now, it's a big thing. Yeah. It's a big thing. It's not a small thing. Yeah. But he looked pretty good in recent fights and got a finish there against the Asian fighter. Mm -hmm. I forgot his name. Who? Yes. Got a finish in the third round. And I thought he got pushed there cardio-wise. Like, he almost he – opened, he opened up his, his gas tank in round one. Yeah. Hit this kid with everything. <laughs> yeah. And the Asian kid was like, I got a chin. So one of the best chins I've seen. Yes. Right. So he took a lot of hard punches from Petrovsky. I thought Petrovsky showed an evolution in that fight, got a third round finish. And so if, if we can all agree that the wrestling aspect is fairly equal when it comes down to if their gas tanks are similar, their wrestling is equal and their pedigree for wrestling is, is definitely about equal. They have both very good backgrounds in wrestling. Um, and so the bottom line I think is that if the fight goes to the ground, and it's fairly equal, then we have a person with much better submission ability in Petrosky. He's much better at submissions, whereas Maximov, who is a good wrestler and is a position control guy and goes to decision usually, and that's his path to victory, if he plays around on the ground for three rounds of Petrosky, then there should be opportunities for Petrosky to get a, a submission of some kind. Um, and so the fight to me is a pick em. Yeah, And, and yeah. for that reason alone, I believe Petrovsky has a ton of value here. Now, Maximov might win. He gets two of the three rounds, gets position control. Petrovsky, you know, somehow gasses out. Everyone would see that and say, I told you so. Right. 
but this is about the money line. This money line is is way off. And Maximoff is getting, I think, he's getting the Nate Diaz hype. He's yep, getting the for sure. Contender Series hype, you know. And Petrovsky's getting a little bit of like, you know, you're older, you're you're the has been. We've seen you gas out, and I think that's affecting the money line. I, th- I think you're I think you're spot on. Yeah, um, and because does Maximoff have two two wins in the UFC so far? Yeah, and the Puno Halle win was like right. Barely a win. Um, right. <laughs> you know, and, and that's a question too I asked myself. And who's the better wrestler, Petrosky or Penahale, in terms of MMA? And clearly it's Petrosky. Right. Now they oh, all have yeah. pedigrees of like state championships, level of caliber. Uh, Punahale was a state champion. Petrosky was not a state champion, but was a runner up type of thing. But the bottom line is, I think in the mixed martial arts arena, Petrosky's a much better wrestler no than Penahale. And if that fight was a split decision and was close, then here we have a very, <laughs> very close fight. So right. the money line is just way off. Yeah, and I think 100%. there's something to be said. Everybody is, talks about how Petrovsky gasses, but they forget to talk about how he demolishes people in the first round. Right. Ev- everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, there's something to be said about that. The, the kid is a stud. And so what if he wins So what if he wins round one and two, and then he's gassed out in round three? What's Max Mock going to do? Just right. lay on him? J- just lay on him for the full round? I agree. Not submit him. He can't submit anybody. Right. On the feet, he has moments but the ground game so we could very well see again two rounds to, to zero going into round three and then maximal comes out there and definitely wins round three but just lays on him right and and i even talked about this in my breakdown a little bit um if you wanted to to really like play your odds kind of like betting in in roulette you know like playing the board right ma- maximizing your odds if you were to take petrosky straight up and then sprinkle a little bit on Maximov round three, which is plus a thousand. Look at that. I think your odds are pretty good <laughs> of winning money. Now, I ended up not taking Maximov at all because I think Petrovsky wins. Um, but I think that, that taking that uh, profit is pretty good. Maximov round three. Yeah, last I looked, it was like plus a thousand. There I'm we so go. curious about the wrestling in this fight. I'm I so know. curious as to who's the better wrestler because, you know, Maximov took Cody Brunges to task and he took Putin Holly to task. Those are both former, like, accomplished high school, college level wrestlers in this matchup. I'm curious. Very curious. So Manuel, who's who's your favorite bet? Straight up. On this entire card? Yep. Ooh, I'm in the spot here. I'm going to go with Davy Grant. Davy Grant. I like it. Yeah, I like I him. Like I, I have a lot well. of confidence in him at this spot. I think Smolka is a jack of all trades, uh, very inconsistent. Davy Grant is at his crescendo, I believe, in his career at this point. He's Fighting his best yeah. version of himself, you know, and uh, probably goes a decision. Two tough guys. Um, or Smoker has shown some chin issues. But, yeah, I like Davey Grant. I think a close second for me on this card would be the uh, Japanese kid, Tatsuro. Tatsuro? I, I faded him. Okay. Um, just because I get nervous with these Japanese prospects. Because oh, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> they – they haven't always banned out if you've been following. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but that's literally my only reasoning. So I could totally see why you would take him. You know, the, the, the spots I like on this card, it's it's on the prelim, actually, is I like the fight going to round two in the Maximo fight and the Tatsuro fight. Now, I know that's a, that's a prop, but those are sitting around like minus 450 for Maximoff and Petrovsky to go to round two and minus 360 for Tayada versus Candelario, Candelario to go to round two. Now, those are not spots I would play individually. All right. If you're looking for a parlay piece, those two fights most likely go to round two. And then some of these women's agree, bouts yeah. probably go to decision, if not to round three. I think uh, the Chukagan Rebus fights like minus 300 for the fight going to round three. Um, again, these are like parlay spots if you're looking to sort of you know get mm. away from choosing right. a winner. The only right. thing I would be hesitant about 
is the only way I see Tatsuru fight not going to round two is if Tatsuru loses. Okay, gets cracked. I think, yeah. Okay, that's so a possibility. Then you could be, if you're on the Tatsuru and Tatsuru goes to round two, I, I could see that be in a world I could see there being that it being a double loss. Yep. Yep. Um. But I I still do think it goes to round two. I mean, I think if it if it goes the way that I'm hoping it goes, that Tatsuro right. gets some grappling time, um, I think it goes to round two. There are a lot of unknowns there, though. Carlos is kind of a wild man, and he's he's going to come out there like a Tasmanian devil, look to to at least get this kid acclimated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so can Tatsuro like get his back? That's what I'm hoping for, like a, a triangle, back control. Ugly first round, um, backpack, backpacking him, and I think Carlos Candelario, from what I remember in that contender series fight, that fight was really wild. Like both guys were way off balance, yeah. you know. And maybe yeah, maybe by round two and three, they were both just trying to get the contract. Um, but man, those guys were both being just completely wild. And so I'm thinking if he comes in here and gets a little off balance, you get the Japanese guy who's going to be looking to be very conservative. But you have some questions. He's been here a little longer than he thought he's going to be right now, two, three weeks instead of one mm -hmm. week or so because he had the first fight and then stayed and yep. kind of Lario got sick or got some food poisoning. That's a common thing now, I guess, going around. <laughs> yeah. What are they feeding these guys? But I do agree with you. There's some, you know, trepidation there. I like him to win. He's my second favorite to win outright on this card. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to back up the bag. Yeah. I'm, thinking, I'm thinking two guys I like for a parlay. I like uh, Alexander Ratchik and uh, Caitlin Chukagan. Ooh, ooh, yeah. I like I like Chuk as well. Yeah. Talk to, talk to me, boys, about Chukagan. Uh, she she lives about an hour and a half from where we're at here. Really? Yeah, she's in uh, Quaker Town, Pennsylvania. Uh, not even an hour and a half, maybe an hour from Newtown, PA, where I'm based out of. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think she does everything right in fights. She's super technical. She's big for the division. Um, she likes the uh, Kiaz, which I think helps the judges. Doesn't hurt. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Um, so annoying. The though, only by thing the way. she lacks I'm sorry, is power. But it's so fucking annoying, though. It is annoying. It is. Only thing she lacks is power. Um, uh, you don't need power in women's good. women's MMA. Just volume, right? Just volume. Just volume. She's looked good. Uh, I like Reboss too, but I don't know. I, Chukagan, when I was watching tape on it, it Chukagan seems superior. Yeah, and also if there's one thing we learned from last week is your strikes don't actually have to hit anything. <laughs> you don't have to make contact in order for it to be counted as a strike. Jeez. Oh, God. In fucking women's MMA. You just, just the attempt, just the forward motion. I think that's in all MMA, not just women's. I don't know who counts these strikes. Yeah. Yeah. Rebus, you know, then, she, uh, Rebus is pretty good, though. It's a tough she one. She is. It's a tough one. You know, um, and, and the thing that does scare me is I think the UFC wants Rebus to win. Uh oh. Yeah. I think they like her. You know, she's pretty, she's attractive. And, and if you watch her in interviews, she's got a great personality. Yeah, too. She, like, she reminds me of Norma Dumont a little bit. Similar. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then Ratchik, we were talking uh, beforehand about how Jan has been seen as sports psychologist. <laughs> and the first thing I thought of when, when I read that was uh, Tony Soprano, when he's like, I'll get, <laughs> don't tell anybody because I'll get killed for that. <laughs> I'll get killed for something like that. Uh, yeah, right. And it just makes me think he's got some quit in him. Yeah. I mean. Well, uh, his last fight with Glover certainly looked like he quit. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I heard a take that, possibly we've seen the best of him already you know that like the best is in the rear view, rear view mirror like you know now what we're seeing is you know the leftovers of a former champion and i mean would he be the first guy who won a bell and then had that moment and then from there sort of you know made it a right. little bit of a decline he's not young no he's 39 yeah, yeah which is i think so. which is still you know okay at a light heavyweight division um mm -hmm. yeah I mean, how old is Glover Teixeira, though? Glover's like 50. <laughs> Glover's 42, yeah. I mean, yeah. not. I'm not knocking him for his age. Just 
throwing it out there. I mean, but I was going to say, looking at the Adesanya fight, which he won the fight and he came in as a slight dog, mm-hmm. and the biggest fight of his career, probably right. That was the biggest win. I'd say, yeah, uh huh. But it wasn't just; it, it came more down to just weight. He weighed more than Adesanya. He got some top right. control. You know, it was a good matchup too. Great matchup for him. It was perfect with the wrestling. I think the UFC yeah. wanted Adesanya to win that fight. Actually, UFC's like, look for sure. You know, marketing yeah. the two. You know, hundred percent. And they were like, this is winnable. It's an older <laughs> champ. You know, right. So he reminds me of um, who's the heavyweight champion, uh, Stipe Miocic, the kind of guy where they're not the most physically talented, but they they're they're right. at the right time. They're just durable enough. They're nice guys. They overachieve. And that's my point, I guess, on Jan Blachowicz. He's been overachieving be right for parts of his career. And I think now, you know, against a guy like Alexander Rakic, who's, you know, tough dude, probably not going to get this win. Yeah, I don't think so either. And, and it, I, I do. I question the toughness of Jan Blachowicz. I really do. I think he's going to go in there. He says he's in, in good spirits. He, this sports psychologist has been helping him. But is it going to help you once this fight starts and you get hit with some shots? I mean, that quit will come back. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, again, the age. Um, like, you know, look at what Rose was saying. Did you see part of that interview with Rose and her coach on uh, MMA Hour? I did. Un- unfortunately, I, I did. Oh, my God. That was so awkward, dude. <laughs> I, I tell you what, she's she's doing a horrible job if she wants fans. Yeah. She's, she's, she's pretty unlikable. And I thought her fan base was like swelling. Like leading up to yeah. this fight, there was like the original Rose fans from back in the day, and you know, shaving the head, and and then then she had the, the loss, but then she came back, and then got you know got the win, and then you know, over, you know all this hype. And I'm thinking like she's in a great place, all right? And now it's like she can't say anything right. No, like nothing, nothing coming out of terrible. her mouth is is pleasurable to her fans. <laughs> Or is it like mixed martial arts? Like, <laughs> like I'm trying to grab snippets of her quotes, and I'm like, if you're working in the front office of the UFC, you're like, did she just say that? Did she just say that right. she doesn't want to get her face beat up? Or, I mean, so many sacrilegious comments. Yeah, and she was happy. She 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 ended up saying, "I'm happy. I got out of that fight what I wanted to." <laughs> like what? How? Yeah, it was just How? it was it was. You know what it was? It was a lot of rationalizing. I'll tell you that. You know, uh huh. The, the mind could 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 twist and, and mm-hmm. start creating all different you know scenarios where your world is right. When I mean, there's a lot of realities there. Reality number one: you you definitely did not do enough in that fight to win the fight. <laughs> no, that, that's no, that's clear. To then afterwards come at like everyone for saying I shouldn't have to get beat up in fights, and you know she didn't do anything either. It was it was so awkward, dude. And she didn't do anything either, but she did more than you slightly. Yeah. So Carla Esparza definitely can get her share. Um, I think yeah. she said less dumbass shit in the press conference. So she didn't mm-hmm. sound as much of being in denial. Right. Um, but she had a wedding like coming up. Like, did you start asking questions yourself? Like, did she not want to get into a fight either? <laughs> it, was it was bad. It was, really it was rough. very bad. It was They're rough. lucky that wasn't the main event. Yeah, that was rough. And. I guess the idea of a trilogy is out the window because that was so bad. And uh, yeah, I don't know where Rose goes from here. She, she, and that, I didn't know about the whole Pat Barry thing. Like I, I have to be honest with you. That was like new information for me on the whole, like that she was young. Yeah. Like I didn't know about this stuff and it's their personal business. So I'm not judging, but the way that he came off <laughs> that interview was so shady. I don't even know the guy. I know the guy. I don't, I don't know him at all. Like, at all. <laughs> like I never, I never could have pointed him out from a thousand people. I heard the name, uh-huh. but dude came off so sketch. Oh my god, so sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I used to fade him when he when he would fight. <laughs> I would fade that Barry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he came off terrible, and then and then uh, who was it came up in his defense? I. I can't think of who it was. Sean came Strickland? up in his defense. No, no, no. He can't, he, he was the one going against him. Yeah. <laughs> Someone came out saying defending Pat Barry, being like, "Well, actually, Pat Barry waited till." She oh was yes, 18. yes, yes. That's right. There was some there was something on Twitter. You're right. 
Yeah. Which sounded and so sketchy Sean too. Strickland was like, Sean Strickland was like, that's grooming, bro. Like, that's a thing. I, I, like, I, what are you talking about? Oh, dude. Oh. Yeah. That interview was and so I, I never side. I never side with Sean Strickland on Twitter. He's a, always having bad takes. Yeah, he's kind of rough. And yeah, some of his shit that he says is so stupid. Have to wonder if it's for just publicity at, <laughs> at some points. <laughs> but but I side with him here. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Strickland does love, like pretty much exclusively use Twitter to like just fuck with I people. I think so. Yeah. I, th- I think so, yeah. It's a social monster. Mm-hmm. I missed the first half of that. Who is uh grooming? We were we were Pat just Barry. talking about the the Rose fight. We were talking about something before that, but I forgot. We were comparing it to another fight. Oh, oh, she married her trainer? Well, yeah, that became well. <laughs> We quickly jumped down <laughs> yeah. that that ugly <laughs> rabbit hole because we can't help yeah. ourselves. Uh, we were talking yeah. more about the interview on MMA or with um, Air Hawani. Did you see part of that interview, Scott? I have not yet. Oh, okay. Don't do it to yourself. You're going to need to like, you're going to have to wash yeah. yourself off after that interview. It is so <laughs> greasy and disgusting. And I was telling him, I didn't know really much about Pat Berry before that interview. But after the interview, I came off feeling dirty. Like Jesus, this dude is very scummy. Rose is delusional. They were trying to rationalize how the fight went, and we all saw how it went. <laughs> yeah, not very well. No. Not good for anyone. No. Failure all across the board. Like, yeah. Definitely entertainment failure. Anyway. So, so next up, uh, what's your guys' thoughts on Amber Heard and Johnny Depp? <laughs> that shit was funny. No, I'm just kidding. That shit was really funny. Uh, but yeah. Any other bets you like this weekend? I'm liking. Uh, I think I'm liking Michael Johnson by TKO. Ooh, uh, I like that as well. After seeing how uh, how gaunt and shitty uh, Patrick looked on the scale, yeah, Patrick. If it if it's a TKO, I see it happening because Patrick balls up. You know, does the I'm not I poked this time by Mason. Like Mason was fucking him up, and he just basically <laughs> was packing it in. Yeah. I think the same thing happens here, but there's no eye poke, and he just <laughs> he looked rough in the scale too, right? I'm not a big scale guy, he did. but he didn't look great in that scale. Yeah, I have a new rule. It, I started this rule like three weeks ago, four weeks ago now. Um, the scale cannot get me onto a fighter; it can only get me off. Okay, okay, I like that. Yes, yeah. that's, that's goes into the into the bank of rules we've got where. <laughs> Don't bet on fighters who whose only path to victory is finish. Now we don't let it get you on to someone. It can only take you off. I like yeah. it. I like it. Yeah, I'm weird with the scales because I've seen we've both seen uh, fights where the person looks horrible mm-hmm. and it has nothing to do with the outcome. Nothing at all. Yep. You know. That's why I'll take a no bet where yeah. okay, I was wrong, but doesn't cost me anything. I, I literally don't have a bet rather than but then sometimes a guy goes through a weight, bad weight cut and he gets knocked out and he's like, oh, yeah, I had a horrible weight cut. Did the Rob Font weight issue have any correlation with what happened in his Vera fight, you think? I'm just, just asking. Like what's getting dropped so many times? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, he got his ass kicked. Probably wouldn't have mattered either yeah. way, but I'm just wondering. He didn't have good weight cut, right? He missed weight. No. Yeah, he, had I think he bad, missed by he, like two and a half. He had a bad weight cut. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's usually a sign that something is wrong. Usually it, it means that the fighter's injured, which, which right. is scarier than that having a bad That would be something that's cut. wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, he looked bad because He looked bad in that fight. I mean, he, he, got, he yeah. got his ass beat up. Vera's pretty good, but Vera's yeah. never done that to anybody. No, and <laughs> Rob Font, I mean, we we're talking about Caitlin Chukagan doesn't have any power. I mean, Rob Font has no power. Right. The dude hits yeah. people with hundreds hundreds of strikes in his fights and they're just fine (laughs) yeah Yeah. that's the fight we were talking about kyle we were talking about the chukagan fight that's how we got it talking about rose right was the haya nonsense (laughs) and how this helps to basically get the edge in the scorecards you know yeah i mean in a women's battle where usually no one gets knocked down no one gets cracked that can be all the difference in the world yeah well, also, it's whoever the announcers like better. Uh, that's, that seems to have a direct impact 
on the judging. And uh, I think in the in Tyson Fury's last fight, the judges were wearing noise canceling headphones, so they were, were just they? watching. Oh, yeah, they were just watching the fight, which it, it would be uh, very. I think I think it's something that the UFC should should try out so that they don't have fucking bizbing all over <laughs> someone and they're like, oh, I think I think uh, I think <laughs> fucking Andre Orlovsky did win. Well, the UFC definitely <laughs> yeah. doesn't. Uh, they definitely don't do that because the judges in the last event were watching the Canelo fight. You see pictures of that? <laughs> oh Jesus, hell no! They, did not. Serious? The UFC judges. There's a picture up, up on Twitter. Literally had a side screen watching the Canelo fight. Oh my goodness! How oh. bad is that? That's pretty well, fucking terrible. Sense. Sometimes they're not watching the fight. <laughs> Sometimes they're right. not watching the damn fight. No. Yeah, yeah, it's brutal. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, no shocked. I was not shocked one bit when I saw that. I mean, what's weird is the recent thirty twenty seven on one card, and then that person ends up losing the fight. <laughs> this happened now yeah. a few times recently, where someone gives thirty twenty seven to one fighter, and that fighter <laughs> loses the fight. It's right. like well, you're, in your world, bet on. like in your world, you saw every round for that fighter, and then they ended up losing the fight. Oh, shit. It, it happened twice, and I was on that fighter both times. Oh my gosh, yeah. was that, was, that <laughs> Clay, was was Clayton Rodriguez in one of those fights? Oh well, actually, I, I was on um, I was on the other side in the Clayton fight. That was a tough one. That was close. It was. I close. thought the other guy got uh, the fight though. I thought Rodriguez lost. I thought he lost. Yeah, it was, that was a close one. I wouldn't even call that one a robbery. But there have been robberies recently. Uh, Collier. Oh, oh my God. Ooh. Still bitter. Man. That was a 30 27. That oh, was a 30 27. Right. And the other there two had, had 29 28 for Arlovsky. I mean, that, that was a clear Collier win. Very clear. I mean, it's so bad, man. It's so bad they keep giving this guy wins. Arlovsky keeps doing <laughs> and it. And that's and that's how he that's how Arlovsky won his last fucking fight, too. Yeah. Is split decision. I'm pretty sure one judge gave Vander all three rounds. <laughs> Or was it at least one yeah. of them? It's just him. brutal. I mean, I hate wagering on fights like that. <laughs> I hate being like, well, because the judges tend to give him the fight, he lost the fight. Yeah. He, like, I hate out. betting that way. That's like not, that's not like smart right. betting. But then again, I, turned, I, then again, I took, I took uh, Collier on that fight, so I lost. Yeah, yeah I had Collier as well. Of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. What was, uh, what was the other one from last week? It was ridiculous. Um, from two seventy four, right? Yeah, I remember. I thought Shogun won. There were a lot of split decisions last week. Yeah, I thought right. I thought Shogun was going to get that uh, the nod on that in that fight. I'll tell you, Lupita Godinez looked good. She looked so improved. Lupita looked really good. You are right. <laughs> she yeah. was she was excellent. You remember when she fought? Uh, what's her name? Lost the fight by decision. It was a close one. The veteran, I forgot her name, but she threw her to the ground like three or four times in the fight. Like literally tossed her, but then wouldn't get on top and wouldn't engage with her. Right? Yeah, yeah. It was a fatal mistake because she was losing the fight, and she could have easily gotten some ground control. In this fight, she was all about the ground attack, took mm-hmm. position control. Yeah, she looks. She came into that fight as a minus one seventy against um, Carnalasi, and I, I liked Carnalasi as a dog in that fight, but Lupita looked. I did we too. Yeah, but, uh, luckily we, we ended up not two it, but. two fucking judges gave uh, it was 30 26. Yeah, wow, that's not a bad another card. one was 30 26. That's not a bad card. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was also disappointed in Melissa Gatto, I thought she would do much better. Um, I know Cortez also looked like a better version of herself, she made some improvements, and she did. I'm also willing to fade her. Cortez Probably in her next fight, yeah, yeah. Well, she's one dimensional, right? You know, mm-hmm. on the feet again. Against... As she as she goes up, I think. I and think I thought that in this fight, fight, man, I was just off. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was, was going to be this fight, yeah. Gato. You know, like, right. yeah, I had a bad play on that one. Norman we Dumont we too. I like Norman Dumont, and that just, oh man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's looking back, it, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Obviously, it really is. Yeah. Um, any other plays you're you're liking this week? Let me look here back at the card. <clears throat> I think uh, I got a two teamer that's probably not going to hit, and you're getting plus money on it in uh, Yon Kudalaba and Alexander Rochik. 
I like it. Just money line like straight up those two. Uh, well, the, I think the the line is is favorable enough. Like, I wouldn't mind throwing the minus two twenty on Kudalamba and Rochik at minus one ninety is very doable. But to get you know together, I think they probably both win fairly easy. Span is not that great. Yeah, uh, he looked like at, he looked, he got fucking demolished by Anthony Smith. And he fought uh, Sam Alvey to oh, geez, a split cl- decision. Fight, I thought he lost that. I thought Ryan yeah. Span lost that fight. Yeah, same. We, I, I, we were probably on Sam Alvey in that fight. <laughs> probably. He's another one. He's he's Michael Johnson. God I bless pick you Sam guys. Alvey Whenever time. I see Sam Alvey, it, to me, is like an accurate benchmark. I could measure from there how bad a fighter is or how good they are about how they fought against Sam Alvey. What's crazy is like when Sam Alvey is – attacking he looks good every time he just is like rose nami Yunus and I, I don't know doesn't doesn't choose to fight sometimes yeah he's a yeah a, 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 a i also fight. like how he just lets himself go to sleep when he's getting choked <laughs> <laughs> is he in like an eight nice... losing streak right it's like eight or nine fights. it's crazy and i think he actually has another fight in the ufc yeah he has a three-fight contract right now, I believe right now he yeah, just signed right. a three-fight contract yeah, yeah. Oh my god. So you might go like eleven fights in a row. I mean, It'd be awesome. It'd be great. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. yeah, he's rough. Yeah. But yeah, for Ryan Spann to go to a split decision against him and now he's in a co main event against Kudalaba who's got mental issues, probably Kudalaba just choose him <laughs> up. Yeah, Kudalaba, I mean is I hope he paints himself green again. <laughs> that was awesome. Right? I mean, come on, that was great. That guy he pushed, by the way just fought recently was out for like a year really yeah the guy who he... uh yeah oh yeah, uh khalil fought. roundtree yes no no not roundtree That's who he it was pushed. a spanish guy it was like a oh, he just oh, no, fought. He yelled in, in round is it Dr- dracar no he looks, like was, dracar. He, was he looks like dracar oh, but he looks like dracar also was... got dracar also got pushed and had to get neck, <laughs> neck surgery yeah by jeremy stevens okay yeah, yeah. so okay. it was <laughs> He looks like Dracar. He just fought recently, but yeah, he got pushed by, by this monster. And I think Kudalaba, yeah. like, yeah, d- his attitude, his anger issues alone probably get him the win here. Because Ryan Spann comes off to me like he's not about that life. He's not. <laughs> he's definitely he, not. He's about talked the, about the, it the sour just cream just like, <laughs> <laughs> He's talked about it you, like like Jan. Like uh, he doesn't always show up. Yeah. I, he doesn't always want to be in there. And you have to want to be in there against Ian Kudalaba because he'll mess he'll you. He'll kill you. Yeah. He'll get like, you. I can see Ryan Spann, like, catching Ian Kudalaba because Kudalaba gets a little wild. Maybe comes he in does. and walks into something. Yeah. But if he doesn't get his respect early, then Kudalaba's going to just walk all over him. And just attack he him. He might slam Ryan Spann through the, through the cage, <laughs> through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some of those slams he does are, are violent. This dude yeah. is, he's nuts. I mean, a minus 220, some good value there. I do like Kudalaba. Um, probably my I third most favorite spot on this card in terms of a straight out ability to win. Yeah. Yeah, I like him too. You know what I thought was crazy? A, a line that I, I saw was Kudalaba by decision is plus 750. Really? Wow. Plus 750. Right. I took it. I had to. Um taking a note of this right now because <laughs> i mean yeah. he probably finishes span but i think so too but but, but yeah there's the but that's like, a good hedge that, most fights go to decision and plus 750 for a fighter who i think is going to win i mean it's just a, it's just wide i mean if a fight gets to the ground for a period of time and some clock gets mm-hmm. chewed up that's the key to get those, yeah, he did, those decisions he didn't finish devin clark he didn't finish devin clark he didn't finish um What's his name? Uh, the guy who had this uh, draw with. Um, I mean, that's the fight where he knocked in Devin Clark's teeth. <sighs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Those like knocked were, in the, were... the gum line. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Yeah, it was like his whole, his whole, right above his jawbone, just came off as a unit. Like <laughs> yeah. four teeth all the still whole together. Deal. Like. Yeah, and then fought. Kept fighting. Kept fighting. Finished yeah, the fight. He did. Wow. But yeah, that was Ugh. from a a knee. A Kudalaba knee in, in the clinch or something like that. But yeah, no, he's a bad boy. He, he's if he gets his shit together, 
<laughs> like if he can get, maybe he needs to see the same therapist that uh, Blahovitz is talking to, calm him down, <laughs> right? I know. Um, yeah. Or whatever, maybe not. Maybe just be a wild man. But if he gets his whole game together, he's he's a good fighter. He's a good fighter. Ryan Span. I mean, he has he has the tools. Yeah, I think he lacks the the mental. We talk about the you know that that dog. Yeah. Does he have that dog in him? You know, will he? Uh, yeah. Will he fight through adversity? You know, some guys don't fight through adversity very very well. No, the good hammers, bad nails. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> Yeah. All right. You want to end on that? Good hammers, bad nails. We sure. Can, we can, boys. We can. All right. Yeah. That was, I, a, that was a fun I one. I hear my infant screeching up there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Um, Got Bellator starting in a few minutes. So. Yep. Yep. I'm gonna tune into that. Check on the, yep. the way. Perfect timing. All right, guys. All right, guys. Do so. Right. Good luck this week. Later. <laughs>